Hey everyone, so we got a lot of interesting stuff to talk about today. So basically, I'm going to show you the basic, a basic run through of BP Studio, then a quick run through of Tree Maker, and then I'll show you how to combine them. And after that, then I'll give you my analysis, opinions, and also some philosophy, some philosophical origami question stuff. So let's get right into it. Let's start with how to use BP Studio. So BP Studio is actually, it's great. It came out not too long ago, like Christmas 2020. And compared to Orihime, Orihime it's very beginner friendly. Like you don't even think, you don't need to download anything. It works on, on mobile and all devices. It works in your browser, basically. You just go to this website. I'll have it linked in the description. It's bpstudio.abstreamace.com. Yeah, so I'll click on that link, and then you can open this link on your phone, your computer, tablet, whatever. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna click on this paper thing in the top left, and we're gonna make a new project. Now, once you make this new project, you'll see that we have this tree tab, and we have this packing tab. So in the tree tab is where you'll create new flaps and rivers, and you can change their lengths, and you can also join them or join them and uh, split them. And also in this tree tab, you can name your flaps to keep everything organized, which is always a great idea. And then in the packing tab is where you're going to do bo the bulk of the work. So here you can move the flaps around, uh, make sure there's no overlaps, change the grid size, stretch the flaps. You can change the Pythagorean stretches, etc. And note that it does not do the packing for you. You still have to do that yourself, but it gives you the flaps and it sets up everything for you to do it. So when your flaps are overlapping, if they're too close together, it will give you a red spot. So that's where you know to fix it. And also, if you have gaps that aren't part of any river or flap, um, it's a little bit hard to see sometimes, but you'll have to fix those too. But once you can do that, uh, it makes it super easy to tell whether your packing is correct or not. So that's why it's super beginner friendly. And finally, you can go ahead and name your whole project. And if you're ready to save, the easiest way to save is to go to, click on the little paper icon, share current project, copy the link and paste it somewhere where you'll be able to find it again, like on a Google Doc or something. And then you can actually share the link to someone and they can easily look at your project in the browser without having to download anything. Really simple, really straightforward. Now let's take a look at TreeMaker. So TreeMaker is, uh, you do have to download, TreeMaker, you do have to download it, but unlike Orihime, the download is very straightforward. You just go to Lang's website, which you can actually, you can actually find TreeMaker on by Googling. But I'll have the link in the description. You download the thing um, from Lang's website. And you just open it up. They follow the steps for installation and open it up. So what we're going to do first is we're going to go to the View tab. And we're going to make sure that the inspector and the view settings are visible. And if you ever close them on accident, that's, where you have, that's how you can find them again. Just go to the View tab. So we now have these three windows open, right? The first one is with the blank square. That's the main window where everything's going to happen. Then we have the inspector, which is going to tell us the information about the objects and the, you know, bit by objects, I mean like the flaps, rivers and stuff that we select. We want to find more information about it. We can click on that and read the inspector. And then the view settings just lets us toggle what's, what's going to appear on the screen. Cause there's a lot of data. There's a lot of things it can show you, but it gets cluttered really fast. So you can keep your, keep your thing organized using the view settings. So basically, we're going to start by drawing our tree on the main on the main square. So what it does is wherever you click, it's going to create a, a point. And it's going to connect that point to whatever circle you have selected. So it's pretty straightforward. You shouldn't have too much trouble drawing your trees. And then to change the lengths, you want to select the blue lines. You want to select the blue lines, which are the edges. And you go over to the inspector and uh, in the inspector, there's an, a length box, and so you can change that number. And make sure to click Apply, okay? And you should see the number um, change on the screen. And if it's getting too cluttered, you can go to the View Settings, turn off the circles, turn off the indices, turn off the dots, turn off whatever you need to make your screen uh, organized and, and neat. Then, once you have your tree, you go to Conditions, so you click on the condition tab, and then there's a bunch of conditions you can apply to your flap. So you can pin it to the edge, or make a line of symmetry, which by the way, you set the line of symmetry in the inspector. But yeah, so the conditions are mostly pretty straightforward. Again, 
you should have no trouble picking this up yourself because it's a pretty well-developed app. Once you've drawn your tree, you're going to go to Action and Scale Everything. And it's going to give you a baseline packing. Now, you could just stick with this packing, but if you don't like it, if you think you see a better way, you can wrestle around with it. And um, sometimes the flaps will be locked, but you can unlock them by clicking on the flap and then going to the inspector and forcing the X or Y coordinate to change. And that will, that will loosen it up again. So you can, you can drag your flaps around if you're not happy with the, the baseline packing. And then um, you can have it scale everything again to smooth it out. And it'll find the closest packing. And just remember that this tree maker does not display the rivers. So if you see a red line, it means your flaps are too close together because of a river. You just can't see that river. And finally, uh, once you have a good packing, you can try to click build crease pattern, but a lot of the time it won't build your crease pattern, especially if your tree is pretty complicated, it won't do it. And um, I don't have the time to talk about why today, but just know that sometimes it won't, and that's okay. Because this is where Box Cleaning Studio comes in. So you can convert your circle packing into a BP packing, and then you can fold it 100% of the time. So you may remember a while ago, I uploaded a video or two about a software I was working on. I called it the Circle Pleater, it was on Python. It was kind of rough. But basically, that program, I programmed it so that it can convert circle packing files into box pleating. And although my program had a lot of bugs and because I'm not that great at coding, somehow the creator of Box Pleating Studio found that video and uh, we messaged a bit. Uh, I showed him my GitHub. And after looking through that, he said, oh yeah, it's actually pretty straightforward. And you know, a few weeks later, he actually implemented this function into BP Studio. First of all, once you have your TreeMaker packing, you want to make sure to save it, uh, save your TreeMaker file. It's going to have the suffix TMD5. And make sure all your flaps are at integer lengths, by the way. Then, you're going to go to BP Studio, click on the wrench thing here, and then click Import TreeMaker file and upload your .tmd5 file. Basically, what it does is it takes the coordinate of every flap which usually TreeMaker will give the coordinates some random decimal, which will be the optimal position. But BP Studio will then approximate it onto the nearest grid point. Uh, and then, you know, there's a few other twists to make it work, but that's the main idea. And so you might be asking, well, you know, Plan, I don't quite get it. What's all the hype about this? Why is this so cool? And let me tell you why. Because earlier I told you that BP Studio doesn't do the packing for you. It just sets it up so you can do it pretty easily yourself. But with this TreeMaker plugin, that's not the case. You don't you don't even have to pick the grid size, right? It packs the whole thing for you. All you gotta do is just plug the tree into TreeMaker and then follow the steps I just told you and bam, you have a BP packing that you can use to fold into your desired tree. Like watch this, watch. So remember some of the homework packings from a while ago? Watch, I'll do it right now in a, in a snap. So, so far, we know three ways of how to obtain a box pleated packing. The first is to do it by hand. So, you know, that could mean pencil paper, but also Orihime or other graph paper apps are kind of by hand as well. The second is to use BP Studio to help you make sure everything is correct and then you drag things into place. And the third is to use this tree maker and BP Studio thing to do the whole packing for you. Now, let's talk about the pros and cons of each. So first of all, with the Orihime slash graph paper, it can be quite slow because if you need to change a flap, um, you have to delete a bunch of stuff. You have to delete, you know, the circle, the hinges, whatever you've drawn, and we draw it. Does, it doesn't have like this nice smooth animations that BP Studio does. It also means you have to do Pythagorean stretches by hand or consult BP Studio case by case, which could take a while. You also have to be experienced enough to know when your packing is incorrect or not, because Orihime won't tell you that. But once you can deal with all that, and you can understand a packing just by looking at the ridges, 
becomes by far the quickest way to pack. And also, since you can copy paste and dilate, rotate, mirror things, um, it makes things way faster and more efficient, especially for the complex designs. It also helps that you already have your packing in the CP file, so it's easy to convert into a full crease pattern. Now, the second option with the vanilla box cleaning studio, there are some things it, can, it can't do that Orihime can. Like, for example, it cannot express partials and transitions which in other words, level shifters. It can't copy paste or dilate or rotate the sections of the crease pattern, so it can take quite a while. But for the pros, it's a very beginner friendly tool, right? It helps you learn what you're doing when you're first starting out to pack. And it can help you maximize your pythas by experimenting with many different positions due to how easy it is to move things around. And third, we have the combination of BP Studio and TreeMaker. Now this option has about the same, has pretty much the same cons as regular BP Studio, except maybe the additional con that you don't really learn as much from this process since you're just having the computer do it. But the pros are pretty obvious, like you can get a whole packing for very little effort, right, super easy. So in a nutshell, one, Orihime is probably the best option, but requires you to be very experienced, not only in origami design, but also is quite a hassle to download it and learn how to use it. BP Studio is great for beginners and getting used to reading packings, um, but for more complex designs, it's quite clunky. There's it doesn't there's a lot of options it can't do still. And third, the BP Studio Plus Tree Maker is great if you need a quick packing with little effort, like for example if you're doing like a ten minute design. But I would caution beginners to not rely too heavily on this, so you can still learn how the things work for yourself. All right, now before we wrap up today, there's an important question I want to make sure you all understand. And I remember this question came up a bunch when BP Studio first came out. So I'm guessing that a lot of you who are seeing this for the first time might also be wondering a similar thing. So the thing is, when you look at the origami softwares over time and how they've changed, you'll notice that they seem to be doing more and more work for us as they improve. Like for example, we started off with Oripa, which is, you know, like a basic crease pattern app. And then we got Orihime, which has like, you know, auto grid tools and a lot of other advanced features. And now we have BP Studio and TreeMaker that, you know, fill in our entire packing and grid size and everything for us. And so the question is, you know, at what point can we still say that the design is ours when the computer seems to be doing more and more work of the design for us? And, and has BP Studio hit that point where we can no longer really say that the design is ours, but instead the design belongs to, you know, BP Studio? So I'll give you my opinion and you're welcome to disagree but I think that it is still 100% your design, no matter how much BP Studio or TreeMaker you use. Because think about it, you are a origami artist. You are not a crease pattern artist, you're not a packing artist, you're not a tree artist, you're an origami artist. You are the one who came up with the design idea, you figured out the necessary tree, you folded that tree, and most of all, you were able to transform that paper stick figure into you know, a sculpture, an artwork, something that represents something else. And that, in my opinion, is way more impressive than any number crunching that the computer could have done. Now, of course, in maybe in a few decades or so, when the computers have advanced so far, we might have to re rethink this discussion. But for now, with the softwares that we do have, you are 100% the artist, and the computer is just another one of your tools. Anyways, that's about all I have to say for this topic. I hope this video has taught you how to use some tools that you didn't really know how to use before, and that has kept you inspired to go out and design your own origami models. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions or if you have any thoughts about that last part. Leave a like if you found the video useful and make sure to share this video with anyone who you think might be interested. And with that, I will see you next time.